Hi, hi, thanks for coming back. This is Matt at MyWebPro.com and I am happy to show you a very important new trend in web development. Web accessibility is becoming a very important consideration for business owners as we move into the new generation of website usability. Hi you guys. Web usability, web accessibility, and ADA compliance. What does it mean for you as a business owner and what does it mean for your website? Let's take a really quick look. First, I want to talk about this um, technology. It's called Narrator. It's basically a screen reader that's been installed in Microsoft devices all the way back since 1999 with Office 2000. It makes it so that you can um, basically so you can read Desktop websites. In introduction to web accessibility, web access summary. When websites and web tools are properly designed and coded, people with disabilities can use them. However, Currently many sites and tools are developed with accessibility barriers that make them difficult or impossible for some people to use. See, so, tap, tap, narrate, and task, exit, exit and narrate. Barrier. so some websites are developed with barriers that make it impossible for some people to use. This is a problem. This ethically creates a problem. And as business owners and organization leaders, especially in public organizations, uh, public services and entities that you must utilize to live a normal life, it doesn't make sense that we would go to a website and that it would not be accessible to somebody with a disability. Much like it doesn't make sense that you would ever, you would ever be at an ice cream shop and that the cash register would be on top of a staircase or that you would go into a restroom uh, bathroom and that there would not be a handle on the wall to grab onto. So the things that we take for granted today that have been around for 30 years are things that we have evolved into. It would be ludicrous today that a brick and mortar location not be accessible to Americans with disabilities, but 30 years ago that wasn't the case. And that's where we are today. It would be, it is, it is, it is asinine that a person with disabilities cannot go to Amazon.com and place an order. But we just have not figured out how to get them there, how to get to this place where people with disabilities can utilize websites uh, and 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 gain that same freedom and functionality as somebody who does not have disabilities. So. Let me show you very quickly the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, and this is basically the legislation, the laws that make uh, us responsible as property owners, business owners, or organization leaders that that our services and products be accessible to people with disabilities. So I very quickly want to get something out of the way. As a business owner, are you legally responsible that your website be ADA compliant? Well, not yet. Can you get a letter from a lawyer saying you're being sued? Yes, you can. Does it mean that you're going to have to fight that case or settle? Yes, it does. Once you're once you're once you're served a letter from a lawyer that you're being sued, you're forced then to either comply or fight. Now, compliance sometimes is cheaper than fighting. Sometimes fighting is cheaper than compliance, but don't we ethically want to move towards an environment where we are more ADA compliant and that our websites are more usable? Yes. Let me show you two Supreme Court cases, however, that show us where businesses did fight and were not held responsible for their lack of accessibility. Access Now versus Southwest Airlines. This court case determined that Southwest Airlines is not in violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act because the ADA is concerned with things with a physical existence and cannot be applied to cyberspace. There's one example. Here's another example. Ouellette versus Viacom. A mere online... Sorry, I, th some of this stuff is hard to read. A mere online presence does not subject a website to the ADA guidelines. That's why MySpace and YouTube were not liable for a dyslexic man's inability to navigate their sites, regardless of how impressive the island online theater is. So in other words, some court cases have already been fought and won, meaning that there is this gray area. I do still think we want to be responsible in regards to making websites more uh, accessible to people with disabilities, even though we might not have a Supreme Court um, responsibility or liability to these things. I still think we have a responsibility to our fellow man uh, to take care of them. So let's very quickly look at a few things. Amazon. You're on Amazon.com. You're on their desktop website. There's no way. There's not a, I'm sorry to say, there's not a screen reader. In mouse the mode on. Mouse mode on. Starting move. Huntersville 28. Am Hello. Amazon.com. Online shopping for electronics, apparel, 
computers. Book. Hi, Matt. Hi, task. Narr exiting narrator. It's, it's it's literally a waste of time. Well, they they actually rec Amazon recommends that you use the mobile version of their website if you are um, using assistive technologies. You guys, it's not any better. Hold on. Mouse mode on. Move a V screen capture studio. Fire TV stick with Alexa voice remote prime exclusive price 24.99 limited time offer. Link value https colon slash slash www.amazon.com slash gp slash a slash d slash b zero seven nine one tx five p five slash question mark rep. I, 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 I got to turn this off. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's just terrible. So that's e-commerce, you know, like, oh, I know, obviously, it's going to be hard to place an order online if you cannot see. It shouldn't be that hard. We should be trying to come up with some solution to this problem. I think it's our it's our job as a society to come up with some solution to this problem. Well, what if I'm the North Carolina Department of Transportation? You think I've worked a little bit harder than Amazon has to make sure that my website is usable, is accessible to people with disabilities? Their entire accessibility policy has boiled down to four bullet points. And, and as far as they're concerned, this is the effort that they've put forth and that they're in the clear. Okay, four bullet points, and this was last updated February 5th of 2019. I'm not sure that's enough. Now, I'm not here to throw stones, but I'm not sure that's enough. Novant Health, one of the biggest healthcare providers in our area here. This website, there's, it's almost impossible. Watch. Mouse mode on. Link. Move up link. Link. Value https colon slash slash www.novantihealth.org slash pf. Editable. Okay. Literally, I can't even use this whole piece of the website. ER wait times view ER wait times. Let's give Link. this a try. Value HTTP at ER wait times Novant. Are you ER wait times? Service no before you go. Are you headed to one of our ER 900 wait times or a pro ER? Watch. Image. What do you mean? Image. What do you mean image? Image. image. What do you mean image? I don't like it. I don't narrator. like it. So, you know, here we're looking at Amazon. We're looking at at uh, the Department of Transportation, we're looking at a big healthcare provider, and what we're determining right now is that none of us are doing enough in regards to ADA compliance. Okay, you guys, um, it's disheartening. As a web developer, I don't like it. I, I am always talking to people about this problem. In fact, I recently had a conversation with a fellow peer, um, with a, a woman named Ellen, and she's actually she's act she's actually studied this problem more uh, in detail and. She can tell you that this is this is a widespread rampant problem here in our country that we need to uh, start addressing. Now, if you want to be on ahead of the curve, you're going to start addressing these problems before you get that letter from a lawyer or before legislation comes out forcing everyone to do this. You can be one of three things. You could be A rated, you could be double A rated, or you could be triple A rated right now. Now, A rating means you're putting forth some effort. You can you can defend yourself by proving you've put forth some effort. Like the Department of Transportation, you have some bullet points, maybe you've paid an invoice and you've bought some labor, and you can show that you're moving in that direction. Double A compliance, you're putting forth more effort than A compliance, but there's still work to be done. Um, you're writing, you're making sure that your developer's writing code um, according to certain standards, um, using certain criteria to develop the site so that it's organized a certain way. And then AAA compliance is going to be the highest level of compliance for those people who are offering services to people with disabilities that require um, web logging into a website and utilizing that website. So those are basically the three levels of compliance. And if as a business owner, you haven't considered this, it's time to consider it. I'm planting the seed now, and you're gonna have plenty of time to fix these problems, but let's, let's start uh, holding each other accountable for some of these issues before the government has to step in and force us to do that. All right, I'm gonna get off my soapbox. We're at the 10 minute mark just about. Thank you for coming back. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on LinkedIn and go ahead and share this video with somebody who you know who's running a website and hasn't considered ADA compliance. There's somebody in the world who might want to use your website who can't 
and and let's move away from that and let's move into a more inclusive society where we all have the freedoms that we that we love and enjoy all right thanks you guys have a great day bye